so Scott and Kieran, you're a South West Boxing Media in association with Bricks and Streetwear. Delighted to be joined by British middleweight champ Denzel Bentley. Denzel, are you, mate? I'm good, man. How are you guys? Yeah, mate, no, no, not too bad. So before we start, um, obviously news came today. Denzel, you, you know, you're giving a bit of a, a bit of a slice of your pay to the, you know, the St. Vincent Volcano charity, you made them. Obviously, apart from the obvious reasons of why you're doing it, is it is there a specific reason, or is it because you know the people there are going to need an abundance of help from everybody around the world? That's literally it. Um, the people there are just, just going to need help. That's why I also put the link there, so that anyone that you know wants to help but doesn't know how to can you know click the link and help through that because you know they they make their money through tourism and you know through that tragedy they, they ain't going to be able to have any you know tourists come down. And besides that, that's not even the most important part. The most important part is the families and the people and the children and stuff. You know, their, their homes have been destroyed. You know, they're going to need homes, clothes, you know, uh, probably even food and water. So that's the least I could do. You know, that's that's nothing. It's, that's that's just the least I could do. You know, you just think about it. You think, you know what, they're going to have a hard time getting back on their feet. So like I said, that's the least I could do. Oh, so wicked, mate. Um, so the, the link is on, your, is on your tweet, isn't it? Is that right? Yeah, I, I'm, I'll also put it in, in my bio. Um, on Instagram, I post on Instagram after we finish talking and stuff. But yeah. Oh, we can be well. Uh, we'll obviously, if uh, people out there jump onto Denzel's bio, jump onto the tweet and the link and donate uh, generously. And me and Kieran will uh, we'll check a few quid in as well, mate. For you. So I mean, you're joining us uh, now, mate, from another uh, Frank Warren bubble. I mean, we spoke to the last time when he was in one. I mean, how was it, mate? I mean, you must be you must be getting used to all of this bubble life by now. Yeah, it was, listen, it's still boring, but you know. Um, it is what it is I'm in here you know we've got to take the right precautions and stuff so fair play if this is like I've said before if this is what we need to do in order to box then so be it but yeah I'm kind of used to it now I'm just in my room watching boxing and, yeah, <laughs> and that's it I mean you had a you had an active 2020 having three fights Denzel and I know you're fighting of course again this weekend um, I mean, is is the beauty of having a great promoter in Frank Warren? You know, he gives you these opportunities, and and of course, you are a type of person that takes these opportunities with both hands. Yeah, it's, it's, it makes everything easier, isn't it? You know, you have got a promoter that's able and willing to put on these types of fights, and then you've got a fighter than myself that's willing to take all these fights and these opportunities that present itself. So, uh, it just makes everything easy. It's nice to have Frank Warren backing me. Um, you know, he's doing a good job right now with me. So. I'm just, I'm just, you know, taking opportunities, like I said, that's being handed to me and I'm thriving at the moment. So I've got another test on Saturday. I've got to come through that again and who knows what could come next. Oh, wicked. I mean, is, is that what us fans, mate, can, you know, can expect from now moving forward? You know, want, you know, is it seeing you wanting to be as active as possible, but, you know, in with proper fighters, in with proper 50-50 fights? Yeah, I want to be as active as possible with meaningful fights. I want to be in the, I want to be in a fight that's going to move me on in my career every time I step in the ring. I don't want to be in a fight with fires that I'm, I'm expected to be or, you know, fires that I'm going to run through. I want to be in tough fights. I, I train hard. Camp's always hard. You know, you don't want to go through a hard camp just to fight as someone you're meant to just get out of there. It takes, it's not exciting. It doesn't, it doesn't, you know, get me. I know every now and then, you know, you need an easy fight in between, but in general, like having too many just like give me fights isn't going to get me to where I need to be as a world champion. Because uh, if I want to be a champion, a world champion, every every level I move up in the ladder is going to get harder and harder. So these are the tests and these are the steps I need to take in order to get there and be able to compete there and stay there. I mean, after such a, a tough time, you know, fans have been away from the sport, which is, has been a big miss for a lot of fighters, Denzel. Um, just, just tell us how much you're looking forward to seeing, you know, the return of, of fans being in arenas again very soon. Because you're someone who's got a big following, a big support behind you, mate. And I mean, I know you've won the British title, but I suppose it would have it would have been even sweeter, mate, to have you know your friends, your family at ringside being there with you for those experiences. Yeah, one hundred percent. Even this fight, I wish there was a crowd here for this. You know that, that my family are going nuts over it. They, they, they want to get in somehow. Uh, people on, you know, social media are all going nuts over it. I haven't seen a bad comment about the fight yet. So, you know, mm. the, the crowds for this fight would have been crazy. And like you said, it would be nice to celebrate with my family and friends live at the venue, you know, when I won the British title and, you know, all these other fights. But I'm looking forward to it, not even just as a fighter, as a fan. Like, I miss going to boxing events. I just, 
if there's boxing on, you you might just catch me there. I might even be on my own. I just kind of go watch some live boxing. But yeah, also like as as a fighter, you know, you want fans cheering. You want like uh, this is the second headline. This is the second shot I'm headlining. I only give the headline when the crowds are back, when everyone's there for me, and you know, so up the bright lights and you know the atmosphere and stuff. So I, I'm still yet to experience that, but as soon as I can, I'll be happy. I'll be happy too. Um, this is obviously would be the first defense of your British title and make them. But many boxers, you know, tend to defend, you know, the British title outright these days. Um, obviously mainly because money talks is obviously there's more money in bigger fights. Is that a plan that you have, or is it, or do you have, you know, sort of bigger goals past, you know, fighting for a three, you know, defending it three times? Uh, there's options, you know what I'm saying? There's options, you know, British champion right now, so I've got the option to do that. Also have the option to move on if the opportunity presents itself. But at the end of the day, like I said, I want to be in fights that are meaningful, that's going to push me into my career. So if there's fights that can do that, you know, whilst I defend the British title and win it outright, then I'll definitely do that. But, you know, I'm not just trying to be in fights where it's like, it's just, I don't know, I, I just don't feel the same vibe, same energy. Like for this fight, I'm really up for it. Do you know what I'm saying? For the Mark Heffern fight, I was really up for it. I, I wanted, I couldn't wait to get in there and fight. I, I need that feeling every time. And I know essentially it's down to me. Every fight's a dangerous fight. You know what I'm going to say? Mm-hmm. Because if you go in there the wrong mindset, the, the underdog can come over and, you know what I'm saying, take his opportunity. It's like, just like, you know, any other fighter would want to do that is the underdog and has opportunity. So I can't waste time thinking about uh, people behind, like fighters behind me. But I, I just, I just want to move on. If there's fighters ranked above me that I can defend my British title against, I'll definitely defend it against them and, you know, help, help, help me push on in my career. Let's come on to your opponent, um, Felix Carstens. I mean, before this fight was signed and sealed, there was lots of talk about Felix perhaps going down the European route and fighting for the European title. Were you were you surprised at all that he, he took, in our opinion, you know, a much harder fight against yourself? You know what? He he's he'd said it for a while that he wanted this fight, so I kind of had a feeling he was going to take it, but also I thought his team were pushing him in another direction. Mm. I don't think he thinks this is a hard fight. I think he thinks this is, you know. Uh, an easy win for the British because I don't get twisted. I credit him for taking it. You know, I'm trying to say that he could have went to the European and just been like, ah, oh, that's a higher level belt, so blah blah whatever. But credit to him for taking it. But I don't know what his mindset is. But to be honest, I don't really care what his mindset is. I just know what I want to do on the night. But I wasn't surprised, but I was happy he took it because he'd mentioned it. Like you don't talk like how he was talking in the interviews and then not take the fight. That wouldn't look good on his behalf. So I wasn't surprised, but I, I, was, I was happy. I mean, Felix is, is promoted, as we all know, by Eddie Hearn and Matt Truman. You know, there's a lot of rivalry between promoters, um, you know, in the UK and, so I suppose, around the world. I mean, how happy are you, Ken, is that, you know, Frank was able to secure this fight for you? You know, not so much with a home advantage, but, you know, but under sort of Frank's sort of promotion rather than you having to travel, obviously, and, like under the matchroom banner, do you are you pleased that Frank was able to do that for you? Hundred percent, I'm pleased Frank was able to do that for me. Just more so because you know, like I've said a million times, it makes me feel like he believed in me and is willing to back me when it came down to it. But at the end of the day, if I had to travel down to the match matchroom side of things and you know take, uh, it's the same thing. I'm I'll, I'll go over there and do a job, so it's all good. But I'm just more so happy because you know I just it made me feel like okay, now nah, Frank's really willing to back me. So yeah. What, what are you expecting from Felix Denz? I mean, he's, he's highly touted here in the UK. Um, do you think it's, it's justified or do you think it's a bit of matchroom hype, shall we say? Uh, it is a fight, but it's a, it's a meaningful fight. It's a fight that, you know, the winner moves on kind of fight. It's like, who's, who's the best in Britain domestically? Mm. So it's very important to, you know, get the win here. But I'm expecting him to... to, to you know, come out and try and perform his best, if I'm being honest with you, because if he's not, then I don't know, but I, I'm expecting him to come out and try and perform his best. This is an important important part for both of us. Uh, do you think there's do you think there's much of a different dense, you know, in levels between, you know, Heffron and Cash? I mean, Heffron, you know, clearly carried, you know, the power, the something I'm sure you were aware of, fighting him twice. Um, but are you expecting more of a, a technical fight that you, you, you expect to be having to deal with more of the technical side now fighting cash? 
No, I'm, I'm, I don't think it's going to be a more technical fight. I think it's about the same level. They're both domestic level fighters um, based on what they've done and their record. So nothing shows that any of them have done more than the other. Uh, but I, th- I don't think it's going to be more of a technical fight. I think it's going to be more of a, a scrap, if anything. But we'd have to wait to see on Saturday. I don't know what he's coming with. I don't know what his mindset is. But wherever it is, <laughs> I'll match it. I know you. You obviously mentioned it earlier in the in the press that we all saw Dent. Um, you know, touching upon the spa. I think it was three years ago. The spa that was mentioned between you and Felix. I know you said earlier. You know, it is what it is. It was three years ago. It's a spa at the end of the day. It's not actually you know in the ring on the night. But just just tell us what happened. We heard it was a bit of a roll round after. It got a bit heated. What's your? How do you see it, Dent? Tell us about. Yeah, it was a bit. There was a bit, a bit of a roll round after we started having a little scrap. But he was just being dirty from the beginning. So. It was just, it was, it was going to happen, but the fact that it was him that actually, you know, got out of hand, it was a bit like, all right, you're on a, you're on a bully kind of, kind of vibe. But mm. it's what it is, man. I just, I'm not really bothered about. It. Obviously, I spoke about it because, of course, I was asked. But that's three years ago, wasn't it? Like, he was just coming in hitting low back of the heads. You know what he does. You, you've seen him fight before, so he was just doing all of them antics. And obviously, he claims I was holding on for dear life and all those things, but. Listen, it is what it is, man. Every, every like, there's there's three sides to every story. There's my side, there's his side, and there's the truth. Uh, unless you were there, you know, it's it's who you believe in it, and it doesn't really bother me who who believes who ever believes what. Have we spoke? Have we caught up with um with Nathan Heaney of, of, uh, last week? He's obviously come out this week now and said that he'd like you know, he'd like the win between you and Cat. Is that a fight you you know you'd be looking forward to, or do or do are you going to be touching on? Do you think? Not really. If if it's one of them things where you know we can't do anything about it, and Nathan is there as an opponent, then and obviously he's up for it, then of course, like. But at the end of the day, um, that's not really you know type of opponents I'm looking for. Like he's 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 a good fighter. I'm not gonna you know write him off or something. But you know with crowd back, it will probably will be a big fight with his whole the whole of Stoke just coming yeah. down to watch him fight, and obviously all of my lot. But if I'm being honest with you, I, um. I don't really get nothing out of an Ethan Heaney fight, if I'm being honest. Like just profile wise, it doesn't, it won't go down as our our best win to date or move me forward into challenging for European or world titles. It doesn't. You know what I'm trying to say? But like I said, he, he is a good fighter, but profile wise, he's not the most obviously a Stoke is, but I mean like just all round, he's not the the biggest of names. So it, it just wouldn't make sense of my behalf. Unless he was mandatory and I still had the belt or something all off and he was up for it and, and obviously there was no you know there was nothing going on for me at the moment and yeah I'll take it but other than that like I said I want to move on and you know just take a step closer to my goals Is I, I know obviously you, you won't be looking past the weekend then, of course I know you have but we mentioned earlier about Felix looking at the European route before this fight I mean is that something personally, you know, it'd be a, a great pride for you to go and collect that European belt Danny Dingham we know he retained his title with a draw on the weekend is that something that, you know, next you would like to go down that traditional route that so many boxers like to go down? Yeah, 100%. It's, it's part of the steps, isn't it? It's part of the steps to, you know, another step closer to world level, European, and then what's next is world level. So that's the route that I can take. 100% I'll take that. I have to wait and see what happens after this fight, you know, what opportunity to present itself after. But European is definitely something I'd like to win still. So. Oh, we commit. I mean... Obviously, without giving the game plan away, then how how do you see obviously Saturday going? Is it is it just all about the win, or or do you think you know stoppage with the is the no, stoppage? It's, it's 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 always about the win. It's always just about the win, you know. However, it comes. Like I said, if I see opportunity where I can stop him, I'm taking it. If not, then I just stick to what I'm doing until then. But it's always about the win. Whether you win messy, you win clean, it's about the win. Because at the end of the day, that's that's the most important thing. Uh, it's automatically just going to be a good fight like we're going to put on a show for the people just automatically without trying we're just going to go in there and fight our best so that automatically is going to you know put on a show for everyone that's watching but turns for me I, it's just all about the win Lens, i got to ask you uh, I haven't got it written down mate but i got to ask you uh, do, do you ever feel nerves because i got to say you're the calmest man I know mate <laughs> As time's gone on, not really. Like I do this for a living. Like I can't get nervous every time. That's annoying. You know what I mean? I'm just chilled. I'm easy. 
I've done all the work I've done. That's that, that's all it is. That like, I've done all the work that that's need that needed to be done in the gym. So I don't think about, oh man, what could go wrong? I've done everything I need to do. If if it's, if something's not meant to be, it's not meant to be. What can I do? But in my mind, there's no stone unturned. I'm ready. I think I'm good enough to fight all these opponents that are being put in front of me, or these opponents that are in the same conversation as me. I'm ready to fight them. It's just about staying relaxed till till fight night. I'll be sitting in my room just burning up energy. That's why it's just boring here because in the whole tournament you can you can fall into that habit of just like thinking about the fight and worrying yourself and being like, oh, what is it? I just got YouTube on or whatever. I'm just watching whatever is their podcast, old fights, and I'm just chilled, man. <laughs> or catching up with two uh, gentlemen from South Wales. <laughs> Was that, was that, was that? Oh, yeah, oh, oh yeah, yeah. Catching up with two men from South Wales. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I, I thought about doing this, but going up here, and it must be dense to watch on our interviews on YouTube. <laughs> um, and, yeah, um, yeah, if, before we leave you go, mate, Kieran touched on it, you know, you're having a really busy uh, 2020. Is that the plan for 2021, to be as active as you were back yeah. in the 2020? Yeah, I want, I want to be active this year. Last year, I wasn't active to the back end of it, which was so mm. annoying. The first half of the year was so annoying. Couldn't do nothing about it though, of course, because of the situation. But like I said, you know, the promoters and the board have done well to find a way, you know, find a system that works. And it worked. And I was very active, you know, just taking opportunities that are given to me. But I'm in the gym all year round. So if I'm not fighting, it's just, it just gets, it gets long. As much as I love it, it gets long. But when I'm fighting, there's always something to look forward to. So it's like, okay, another date. And then I'm excited to get into the gym and put in that extra work and, you know, control my diet and all these things. I'm more motivated to do it. But like I said, it's my job. I'll be in there all year round anyway. So being active will help the mindset as I'm in there all year round. Oh, wicked. Well, uh, Dens, we, um, on behalf of South West Boxing uh, Media and me and Kieran, we uh, wish you all the best for Saturday, mate. And hopefully we'll catch up with you, mate, when you've got the two belts uh, to your name. Yep. Both shoulders. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> Yeah, all the best for Saturday, Dad. Take care. Nice one. See you guys later. Take care, bro. Bye.